Ryan Hooping Garner, thanks for, so much for being with us, Real or Virtual. Uh, we would like to ask you some questions about the HTC Vive. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for taking the time so, with us. Uh, VR is finally here after a long wait. Uh, how do you feel about uh, you know people reaction with this new medium? You know, I think the reaction's been fantastic. Um, I think we've hit the gaming community really hard, and everybody's really excited that VR is finally here. And I think it's the right kind of VR, right? Like. It's the VR that everybody was expecting. So we have the room scale VR. Uh -huh. We now have controllers used across the board. So everybody's able to reach out and really interact with that virtual space. And you have people engaging with VR at all levels, from mobile to PC-based solutions. Uh -huh. Everybody has a chance to get involved in VR now. It's quite a different situation from what happened you know, in the 80s, in the, in the 90s, when virtual reality tried to, to, to launch. But technology wasn't ready. Now it's ready. Absolutely. Okay, and do you think there are, you know, you know, AAA studios developing games, or do you expect more in the coming years? Oh yeah, I think we've already seen some incredible announcements from AAA studios like Ubisoft and Bethesda, um, and the reactions to those have been fantastic. Uh -huh. So I think we're, we're going to expect to see more AAA announcements, uh, but I think some of the stuff that we're seeing from the indie community right now is just fantastic. We're seeing a lot of early successes from those developers. Um, and I think some of the people that are figuring things out for the first time, like whether it's new locomotion systems or just new ways to interact with the virtual world, I think you're going to see amazing things from even the smaller teams. Yes, right now I think indie teams are, are more willing to, to invest in virtual reality. Maybe they are more willing to, to risk more than AAA studios. Do you agree? There's definitely an aspect to that. Yeah, as people are figuring things out, it's a lot of those smaller teams that are taking those initial risks. But I think we've definitely understood that the, the larger community out there really wants to engage deeper in some of those IPs they've come to know and love. Yeah, so we are here to stay. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. And, uh, I have a question about the commercial version of the Vive. When it was uh, launched uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, some people were expecting to be different from the Vive Pre, but in the end, it turned out to be more or less the same device with just a couple of, of changes, you know, the, the headband, the head strap. Uh, why is more is the same device? Uh, maybe people were expecting something different, something more more ergonomic and more polished. Is there anything you can say? Yeah, if you look at the the iterative nature of the design of Vive from the very first announcement, the dev kit that everybody saw, the um, the the Gen One dev kit of Vive, to the Vive Pre, then to the Vive commercial kit, it was such a fast iterative process that the design changes were minimal, minimal. and really to make sure that it was the right product. So. To be honest, there, there was a time where we could have launched the Vive Pre as the commercial product, but to make sure that all of those early adopters were going to be absolutely happy with that first product and that it was going to last the long haul, we needed to do some fine tuning to make sure that we were putting the yeah, perfect so product in people's hands. It was mainly because a lack of time, because you, you, had, you had to launch the, the Vive soon, so there, there was no more time to make, to launch a more, you know, more, more polished, more ergonomic product. Oh, I don't think there was any pressure to launch sooner or fast. I mean, we launched when we felt the product was ready. I mean, we we set a standard of what we were expecting VR to be and what we felt VR had to be. Uh -huh. And that was really those kind of core aspects of we needed the right tracking system. We needed to have room scale in place. We needed to have controllers. We felt that that's what it took. And we were happy with what we had. When we got to the Vive Pre, there were some fine-tuning components, whether it's the, the way the cord fit into the headset, the exact cut of the strap, minor improvements that made it an overall better experience. But other than that, we're happy with the product as it, the as it came right out, now. yeah. All right, because there are now some rumors, you know, about uh, an, an, maybe a new improved HTC Vive. You know, I think some Chinese website told about it could release by the end of the year. Is there anything you want to I, I'm also an avid follower of the rumor mill. Uh, I, I, I look to the, the public who's doing the deep dive to find out the information as it comes out as well. Uh -huh. But um, I think r right now we, we have the products that we've announced today. HTC is always looking into what's going to be next and there's so much happening in VR right now that we're definitely keeping the options open and how this field is going to advance from a hardware perspective. But nothing new that we're announcing at this time. Yeah. Okay. Some of the complaints of people uh, about VR right now is that it's very expensive today. You know, both the, the Oculus Rift, the Vive, now PlayStation VR. Can we expect a price drop uh, soon? 
or maybe it's just the same. Well, when you look at the cost, I think oftentimes the feedback that we're hearing about VR being expensive is really about, it's multiple phases, right? It's, it's having the right PC, having the right specs that you need in order to run the proper VR experience at the settings that you want. And then there's the system itself. I mean, when you look at the complete package that we put together, um, and you cost those individual items, I feel like we have a very good price in market today and we're very comfortable with where that pricing is. And then when you look at the larger perspective of what it actually takes to run it in home, whether it is the PC or the GPU, I mean, massive advancements being made in that space right now. We're here at Gamescom with AMD, who's showing off the RX 480. If you look at the price of these cards and what, it, what the barrier to entry now looks like for VR, many people's PCs are going to be VR ready in the very near future. So Yes, because uh, there are now a uh, new graphic card from both AMD and NVIDIA. Uh, uh, very cheap, really, but comparing to, you know, the six months ago. Sure. You know, the, the, the new Radeon 480, I think it's the name. The GeForce GTX uh, 1060. You know, you, know you, can, you can have now a VR ready card for, you know, 200 bucks or 250 bucks. It's, much more accessible than six months ago. Oh, absolutely. I and mean, we're at a place in market today where if you're buying a PC that has a discrete GPU on the shelf, the odds are that that is a VR-ready machine. Uh -huh. And that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, can you tell us something about uh, support for Linux, Linux and, Mac and Mac anytime soon? Nothing that we're announcing just yet. Again, we do work very closely with Valve on how Steam VR is progressing and all of the options available to VR. Uh, but right now we're using Windows only, uh -huh. uh, and we're very happy with that path currently. Uh, right now, I think uh, everybody agrees that room scale is the the, the best feature of HTC Vive. So, uh, do you think game developers uh, make, uh, can take some kind of compromises when developing games? You know, because it has if the game has to work in HTC, Oculus, PlayStation VR. Maybe they have to take some constraints to make sure that the game, you know, it works on the on the minimum spec uh, it, uh, machine. Um, I'm not sure that it's a compromise necessarily, but we've always encouraged developers to uh, ensure that they reach the largest base possible. I mean, we're we're very supportive of an open VR ecosystem, so we want to see developers truly succeed and get their content in as many people's hands as possible. I think we're seeing great experiences across the board, even from standing uh, and seated experiences to the entire room scale. So I think as we start to see new versions of locomotion and new ways to interact with those spaces, that it's going to open up to a broad variety of audiences. Uh, can you tell us something about Byteport? It's a, some kind of, of store, you know, similar to, to Steam, but I think it's only focused on, I don't know, it, it's, it's going to launch uh, globally you know, in, in every country? or. So right now, Viveport is launched and available in China, China for all VR content. So whether or not that's gaming content or entertainment-based content or even enterprise content, all of that is available on Viveport in China where it's launched today. What we really recently announced at VRLA is that Viveport will be coming to Western regions and we're really going to be looking at that area of content outside of the game space. So how is it going to work in tool sets and in the entertainment medium? So while we're very happy with uh, the Steam support of VR today, and we really support the gaming community to kind of live and enjoy their VR experiences there, uh, we want to make sure that a broad variety of content is coming to market, and we're going to do that with Viveport. Uh, right now, PlayStation VR is about to launch in October. Uh, do you feel excited? Do you think it will bring more people to the VR community? It, it will be good for, for HTC, for the Vive, for VR in general? Yes, I'm very excited about all new VR entrants. Um, I think that level of awareness out there in the space can do nothing but help the VR community as a whole. And then when people start to in view these individual VR experiences, they're going to decide what's right for them. So if that's a purely gaming experience or if they want to see all of what VR has to offer, that will help them choose which product is right for them. Yeah, so the more people in VR, the better. Absolutely. So, uh, what can we expect from HTC in the, in the future? You know, the Vive is here, the Vive is here, uh, the product is here. What, what do next? What, what's coming next? You know, I think when you look at what HTC has announced with Vive Port, I think you're going to start to see HTC become kind of a beacon of the VR community, not just a hardware company. I mean, we're really trying to expand this marketplace and introduce people to VR in a new way. 
uh, whether that was from the beginning and really setting the bar for what we wanted VR to be, uh, or whether it's you know play, blazing the trail for where VR is going to go. You're going to see a lot in the VR community from HTC. Okay, thank you very much. Absolutely, thanks oh, for yeah. taking the time.